Uh, hey guys, yeah, this is a quick video just showing how to use uh, OpenSCAD to generate uh, 3D models of the bagels. So we'll just download the um, latest version. And then we'll install that. And then the next thing we need this plugin here, which lets us do this function called path extrude. So we will just download that, and then we will go to the download folder here, and we will copy that somewhere. But first, let's open up S Open SCAD, and uh, if you go here, you can find the library folder. And that's where we want to copy it to. So let's just copy it in there. The contents of the zip file from GitHub. And then we will rename that to get rid of master on the end there, because that's how I have the path set up. Now, if you go back to the original comment down here, we've got the V2 code link. So if you just go to paste bin, you can open that up and copy it, put it into OpenSCAD, and you should now be able to generate a model. I'm going to start with the uh, triple torus um, because it's faster to render. So let's just generate a triple torus here. Okay, so I'll just go over some of the parameters that are available. Um, so basically we've got a number of parameters. The first one is the number of loops per level. So I'll just show you here. If we um, decrease this to say like eight, what you'll notice is the yellow one goes down to eight loops. Go back at 12 and we decrease the second one to eight. That'll decrease the second level coiling to eight loops. The next set of parameters are radiuses. So the first radius is I've called rad p. They're the radius of the torus's center line relative to the parent. And the first one in this list is the radius of the wire itself. So uh, the radius yeah, of the wire itself. So if you set this to 2, the wire should become twice. It'll, it'll go out twice as far from the, uh, the core. Um, just to make this nicer to look at, I'm going to skip ahead to one of the later parameters. So we've got two parameters here, phi step and base segment, which control how many polygons to generate. So the phi step controls the number of polygons to generate in relation to the length of the wire. Um, so if you increase, if you decrease this uh, to like 0 0.1, then it will generate a step every 0.1 radians, which makes it a little smoother um, in that direction. And then the other parameter is to do with the number of polygons used to make the cross section of the wires for the different cores. Um, okay, so back to this. So, so the first radius here to, if you do increase the second one here to eight, um, it would then increase the coiling size of this one. The red, the red coil, which you'll see in a second here, right? Um, obviously, these are going to be colliding just because it's not a viable design. So I'll put those back to what they were originally, one for the D4D ratio. But let's just make this last one bigger just to illustrate. That's the last coil size. Um, right. So it's much bigger now. So it, it's not as cramped anymore. Okay, so then the next set of radiuses are the radiuses that dictate the actual size of the torus for the wire itself. So say for example, we, we put this up to one here instead of 0 0.5 for the radius. This yellow line will get twice that yellow wire will become twice as wide in diameter. Um, obviously, it's going to be self-colliding. Um, 
so this kind of lets you tweak things in an effort to try to see what size tubing or what size wire you would want for a core so that it didn't collide with the wire that was being wound around it so that you would get the proper dimensions. So say in this example here, um, if you wanted to find out how large of the green wire you could have in here for a different size, you would just be tweaking the last number here. So like if it's one, you can see that there's a fair bit of space around it. Um, in a second here when it renders. And you can just sort of increase that up until you find out that, you know, two is the appropriate size. Um, the next parameter has to do with the left or right handedness of the coil, the coiling direction. I'm not sure if I have these uh, correctly defined here. It could be the opposite, but um, you can see it's so basically one here I define as uh, clockwise. So it'd be kind of coiling clockwise as it goes into the screen. Um, and minus one is counterclockwise as it goes into the screen. So you can see here that the yellow one is going clockwise as it goes into the screen. And if we set this to minus one and re-render, it will then go counterclockwise into the screen. Um, the only thing I kind of am noticing as I work with this is that perhaps it's not quite symmetric the way it's coiling it. So it looks kind of more like a, a sawtoothy kind of thing going on here. So um, if people do use this for like simulation purposes and they want me to try to get that to look more symmetric, just let me know and I'll go back and revisit the, uh, the algorithm to see if uh, there are any changes I can make to make it look more symmetric. So I'll do the same for the, um, the second level winding here to make it counterclockwise. Uh, so now you can see that both of them are winding counterclockwise as they go into the screen. Alright, so I'm going to put that back to how it was and we'll go on to the next parameter. So the next parameter lets you define how many cores you want to see. So right now we're showing all the cores and the wire. If you just want to see the wire, you can set this to zero and it will just render the wire. If you want to see just this first level core, you just set it to one. And if you want to see all the cores, you could set it to two. Or in the case of the quad torus, uh, you would set it to three. Um, all right. And I already covered these last two, the phi step and the base segment values here. So I will skip those for now. Um, so the other thing I wanted to mention was um, in the event someone does want to run a simulation where they need to actually have this, right now it's currently connected as a loop. So each of, so the wire is one complete loop that connects all the way around in a circle, and each of the cores does as well. And in the event you wanted to run a simulation, you may want to split those so that you have endpoints to connect to for uh, the purposes of sort of I guess it would be where you would input the voltage for the simulation or where you would input the, uh, the current for the simulation. And if you want to do that, what you need to do is you need to delete the parts I just deleted. You need to set the closed parameter to false here. And doing this should generate oop, some warnings there. I must have done something wrong. Oh, what have I done wrong? Back up, but I knew I did something here. Ah, okay, I see what I did. I typed in an extra number there. I didn't mean to do that. I know I did that. Okay, so set those to false. And generate the preview. And what you'll see now is that if you look at, I don't know where it is precisely, but if you sort of scan around it and you look, you'll find a seam. Uh, I should be able to find it if I can rotate this thing around fast enough. Um, somewhere. Oh, there it is, down there. Okay, so, oh, oh, come back. <laughs> I'm going to lose it. 
I gotta get this so it's in the proper orient. There it is. So, so over on this side is the seam for the uh, the top level one, and the same will be said for the um, the secondary level. It should have its seam over here too. I don't know which side it'll be on. It could be on this side, perhaps. Ooh, it should be at the zero point. So it's probably right behind that yellow one. Yes, yeah, so you can see the seam on the yellow one here. The seam on the red one is probably right behind that. And you can see the seam on the green one there. So that could be useful for simulation purposes. Um, so I've only shown you the three tours so far. So let's go up to the triple one, uh, the quad one, just so you can see how that works. So it's the same parameters. Just there's one extra one for each of them. Um, so we'll just render that. It takes a little while to generate a preview. So it could take a few seconds. While that's generating, I'll I'll mention the um, the output here that it's showing in the logs here could be useful for some people. So basically what I'm showing in the logs as it generates is the length of wire, which is computed based on the center point path length of each of the wires and all the various cores. And I'm also showing the volume. The volume isn't really the actual volume, it's just a multiple of the length of the wire versus the cross-sectional area of either the wire or the core. Um, and it will not be entirely accurate because of that, but it gives you some idea of the amount of metal and the approximate cost of uh, materials that might go into making it. Um, so the last point I wanted to cover was exporting. Um, so basically if you want to export, what you need to do is you would probably only want to be exporting, well you might want to export all the levels, but in, if you are producing the actual coil via three, 3D, uh, what you call it, laser sintering or whatever, you would probably only want the innermost one. Um, so you would just do zero there to get that. And then just generating a preview. And once the preview is done, um, you need to generate a rendering of it to, uh, to be able to export. But it'll often be faster once you've generated the preview anyway. So I'll just generate the render here. Um, So it's done. So now you have an option to export. Um, there's various different export formats. Uh, I think most of them, the only 3D export format I think is STL, although I'm not familiar with the others here. So uh, I'll just export it as an STL. Um, and then you can open that in, up in other packages, like for example, um, I think, do I have Prusa Slicer on here? Let's go to Downloads. Yeah, I do, okay. So if you were to open that up in your 3D printing software, you could just import it in. And you would have your four level torus there. I don't think you could print it with a normal printer or even, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think you'd have to use some sort of laser sintering technique. Anyways, so that is everything. So if anyone has any questions about how to use it, or if they have any requests for changes or additions, I'm happy to consider them. Um, uh, I'm not sure how easy it would be to change it to do different geometries. As long as they can be defined in a mathematical manner, um, it shouldn't be too hard. So that's a possibility. All right. Uh, thanks, guys. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. All right.